Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Tilly and I am a strength and conditioning coach with my bachelor's and my master's in exercise and sports science. Today, I wanted to talk to you all about the topic of strength. I'm going to make two videos on this topic. This one is going to be talking to you about the performance benefits of being strong and why we need strength. In the second video, I'm going to talk to you about how strong you actually need to be to get the performance benefits that I'm going to talk about today. I might make another video in the future about strength for general well-being, but for now we're focusing on sport and sporting performance. As always, make sure to like and subscribe if you haven't already, we'd love to see some support. Now strength is something so fundamental to our movement in everyday life and particularly in sports. I wanted to make this video telling you why strength is important because I have so many clients who just want to skip the strength phase and move straight on to power training. And I've had so many team sports athletes come up to me and say that they just want to do hypertrophy. They just want to get bigger. They don't really care about prioritizing strength. From a coach's perspective, as my professor once said, the most important thing that we do as SNC coaches is helping people to maximize their strength so they can translate it to performance on the field. So let's talk about strength. At its most basic definition, muscular strength is the ability to exert force on an external object or resistance. Strength is a biomotor ability that under pins all aspects of sporting performance. Other biomotor abilities are things like speed or endurance. Within sport, we usually have to make sure that we're strong enough to manipulate our own bodies against gravity. So think of things like diving, sprinting, or gymnastics, endurance running, or we have to be strong enough to manipulate an implement or a projectile. So think of weightlifting, baseball, or hockey, or we need to be strong enough to manipulate our own and somebody else's body mass. So think of things like rugby or wrestling or American football. From this, we can already see that strength is important, but let's dive deeper. Strength impacts our rate of force development and our ability to produce high power outputs. This is something that is integral to sport performance. Rate of force development is often termed the explosive power of an athlete. It is how quickly you are able to develop and apply force. Athletes who are stronger have higher rates of force development than weaker athletes. RFD is one thing that separates people who start on the field versus people who start on the bench. To break this down more, those who start on the pitch are usually more explosive and stronger than those who start on the bench. So when we're doing resistance training and we're gaining strength, we can positively influence our rate of force development. Therefore, strength can directly affect how explosive and powerful you are. You cannot be powerful without first being strong. To explain why we need to be strong first, we can look at Newton's second law of motion. Yes, we are talking physics today. This law, so that we're all aware, is F equals MA. In other words, the forces acting on an object equal the object's mass multiplied by the object's acceleration. Within this law, if a greater force is produced over a given time, then there is a greater acceleration produced and greater movement velocities obtained. If we think about how this is relevant to us, the increases in force occur by us getting strong, and as a result, we're able to increase acceleration. Ultimately, more force will allow us to move more quickly and more powerfully. Now let's get into more specifics. Let's talk about how strength impacts general sporting skills. Stronger individuals have been shown to jump higher than weaker individuals. Stronger individuals do better with sports specific skills like throwing. Stronger athletes have higher velocities in a throw in both standing and dynamic starts. So think of how this would impact the outcome of a handball game or a baseball game. You'd probably do better if you were able to throw faster and more powerfully than your opponents. Stronger individuals are also better at technical skills than weaker individuals. When I say technical skills, I usually mean like sports specific things like hitting a hockey ball or making a rugby pass. Technical skills in sport require a foundation of strength. Think about this. If I'm trying to teach a beginner how to do a weightlifting movement, like a snatch or a clean, a lot of my cues might be ineffective. This is not because the cues are bad or because the individual that I'm coaching doesn't understand what I'm asking them to do, but it might not work because the person that I'm coaching lacks the prerequisite strength to hold themselves and their body in the position needed. This goes to show that being strong can benefit you no matter what training you're at, particularly in those early stages. Another example of this could be the ring cross in gymnastics. If you can't hold up your body weight in that position, how on earth would you be able to execute that movement, the following movements, 
How could you do it? How could you develop the technique required to do that skill proficiently and to make it look good? You wouldn't be able to. Without the physical foundation of strength, you can become more easily fatigued and therefore you're less able to appropriately learn and develop both technical and tactical skills. A lack of a strong physical foundation can also increase your decision-making time in competitive environments. As any athlete knows, we absolutely do not want to be taking a longer time to make decisions. This could be the difference between winning the game or not. Now we can continue further. Stronger individuals have been shown to sprint faster than weaker individuals. Now in team sports like rugby or soccer, the average sprint time is actually only about two seconds. And during this time, on average, athletes only reach about 70% of their maximum speed. In situations like this, it would seem that the ability to accelerate effectively would be more important than individuals having a higher top speed. But guess what? Elite athletes and stronger athletes have been shown to produce greater speeds over over short distances than weaker athletes. On top of this, other skills such as change of direction ability also rely on having a high rate of force development, something that strength is a prerequisite for. During change of direction activities, there's usually longer ground contact times. So it could be argued that stronger individuals have a little bit more time to apply their force through the ground, or they have a longer amount of time to exert their maximal strength. This could mean that stronger individuals would be better at change of direction activities than weaker ones. Now, while all of this is well and good for strength and power sports, it's even the same case for endurance athletes. With elite cyclists, stronger athletes perform better, coming out on top of weaker athletes. With highly trained endurance runners, stronger athletes have been shown to have better time trial results, improvements in running economy, meaning that they expend less energy for the same distance, and they can experience improvements in muscle power. For everybody, not just athletes, Strength is a protector. It is a moderator against injury risk. If you are strong, your injury risk will decrease. This is because stronger individuals are able to tolerate given workloads at reduced risk. They're better able to tolerate changes from week to week in training loads. So if you went from three training sessions a week to five training sessions a week, stronger individuals could better handle this. If you're a sport coach, not an SNC coach, and you don't really like how much time players are spending in the gym, then it's really important that you know that stronger athletes are less likely to get injured. That could mean more time on the field, more time in practice, and therefore better performance in games. I could literally go on and on and on with examples of why strength is important to sport. No matter what sport you are in, endurance, strength, or power sports, everyone needs to work on strength. As a famous exercise scientist, Dr. Stone says, you are never strong enough. So join me in the next video talking about how strong you actually need to be. We're gonna look at some benchmarks for how strong you actually need to be, and we're gonna compare these to some elite athletes and some teams from around the world. So I'll see you there. Remember to like and subscribe if you thought anything in this video was useful. If you have any thoughts, feelings, or questions, I'd love to hear it down in the comments below. Have a great week ahead, everybody. See ya.